On this episode of Big Boys Don't Cry, we discuss the film Fred Claus. You don't have to have seen the film to enjoy the podcast, but if you do listen without having seen it, just be aware there may be spoilers. Enjoy. Hello there. Jingle bells, jingle bells, time to talk about a film. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the films we'll watch are delightful. Except this one. That's good. I thought you were going to say the film was frightful then. <laughs> oh, Vince Vaughn, he is frightful. Has he ever been delightful? Let's discuss that now. On our show, on our show, on our show. There you go. Oh, that's good. I like that. I'm pleased with that. Beautiful. Oh, man, I'm in the mood to dunk on a film. Let's get right to it. (laughs) (laughs) Fred Claus is a film. Frederick Claus. (laughs) To give him his full name. (laughs) As they do, actually, Um, a number of times throughout the film, don't they? Because, weirdly, the character of Santa Claus's brother also has, like, old parents in this film who, like, refer to yeah. him by his full name as your parents do when they're telling you off. Which is why I gave both of my children names that um, that can't be shortened, so they don't know. They just assume <laughs> that I'm telling them off all the time. There we go. There we go. You need to add something on to tell them off. Yeah. Some rude words. <laughs> <laughs> That's why if anyone so calls Fre- me Patrick and I'm in real trouble. So Fred Claus, right? Yeah. Is a film. It's a film. It's a Christmas film. It's our first Christmas film Merry of Christmas. the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I love to sing that any time of the year, obviously. <laughs> That's what I sing at Halloween. Yeah. So, you know. Sand Loon, Swash Timber, Horror Month. <laughs> um, Schneid Loon. This is a film, right? Had you seen, had you seen Fred Claus before? I had not. Or was this your first... This is your first foray into the world. My first viewing. I'd seen the poster for it loads and loads of times, and I don't really even know why. Um, I think it's just one that we kept coming back to, wasn't it? The poster where Vince Vaughn, in a scene that does not appear in the film, is riding on like a tiny little bike, like a child. (laughs) Which is actually, I think, kind of a good poster for what it is. But It's a good poster, although you're right that it does kind of kind of doesn't portray the two characters of fred claus and santa claus because from the poster you see santa claus being like this exasperated like overly serious fella and then fred claus being this jovial person with childlike tendencies but actually it's the other way around where santa claus is the trusting kind one and he is the cynical sort of very bitter person which is what Vince Vaughn is very good at playing actually yeah and weirdly I would say this film surprised me in many ways whilst also being exactly what I expected it to be do you know what I mean by that (laughs) I know what you mean I know what you mean yeah um how did it meet your expectations um well I I was expecting it to be of of low quality and it was Overall, <laughs> gem- generally speaking, there, there's some things to like about it, but the, the sort of the the sort of quite silly mid to late two thousands inconsequential sort of low rent knockabout comedy tone of it was what I expected. But the story and the characters, I think, were not what I expected. As you said from the poster, I thought it was going to be like um, Paul Giamatti as Santa. He's got this idiot brother who's he he somehow has to has to have come and work in his workshop because of some christmas magic or whatever and the brother is just like an idiot who fools around and that's what i thought it would be but as you said it wasn't that was it yeah from the posters and from the general sort of idea of what this film is going to be it almost you get this sense that it's almost going to be like reverse elf yeah (laughs) where where um uh the idiot brother has to who has to go to uh sensible santa claus and hijinks in shoes but instead there's almost this seediness to the film so when did elf come out 2003 elf was 2003 Blimey, 20 it? years of elf this year <laughs> how many years of maple syrup spaghetti 
But yeah, um, weirdly, it sort of follows on from Elf, doesn't it? There's a, there's a funny dance scene in it that is very much like the scene in Elf. But I wrote down in my notes, it's like the reverse of the scene in Elf, where um, yeah. he's working in the post room at his dad's company, and like <laughs> the next scene is him like on his back doing dancing to a whoop. There it is, and like all the the kind of postal workers are, are all dancing around him. And in this one, he gets the elves to dance to um, oh, rubbernecking by Elvis Presley. Yes. With some yeah. inf- input from um, famous rapping man Christopher Bridges. And, yeah, it, it's an interesting parallel to think of this movie against Elf, actually. There are sort of like, there are some similarities to them, in particularly in terms of the way that the real world of a city collides with the fantasy of father christmas and yeah it's it's a bit of a stretch to say it's reverse elf but it's not far off is it in this one yeah human guy goes to goes to the north pole and the magical elf world and elf the magical elf comes to our world yes yeah um one of the films is good one of them is not (laughs) it's worth pointing out that's the biggest difference between the two because this is not a very (laughs) it's not a very good film um i think it's fair to say no um, so what are the problems with Fred Claus then? Um, I think it's, it's, the main problem is that it doesn't, it can't decide whether it's like a slapstick knockabout comedy or actually sort of very overly emotional schmaltzy family drama, right? And it, it doesn't manage to marry those two things up, does it? Would you agree? Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much bang on. Um, this movie is this weird hybrid of what you'd expect from Vince Vaughn Christmas comedy and yeah like this like you said there's this weird sentimental family dynamic going on that's almost sort of th- this is sort of like a, 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 a it's a family movie essentially but there's these weird seedy moments in it which are kind of incongruous with the overall tone that really sort of really make it quite jarring to watch i think it really is and it's loaded with like fat jokes and fart jokes and yeah fatism yeah orientalism and all sorts of really quite bad stuff but then there's it's got this kind of weird emotional core to it hasn't it that is a just a little bit engaging yeah i think there's this weird um there's this weird dynamic going on where the best moment of the movie is what you'd expect from a Vince Vaughn comedy, which is this bitter, slightly cynical humour, um, where he decides he needs to raise this money, so he goes down onto the street pretending to be a charity, takes money from people, uh, takes money from people on the street, annoying the Salvation Army Santa Clauses, who then chase him around. And and that that's yeah. actually quite a funny scene. Um also, it's funny because it annoys the Salvation Army, who do lots of not very nice things. <laughs> not to get into a serious topic on this idiot podcast where we talk about stupid films, but Salvation Army are not the good guys. Um, I think it's yeah. important to point out. And so that is quite, it's quite entertaining that then he gets chased around by all of these Salvation Army Santa Clauses um, who are running basically the charity, uh, the, the charity job gig at Christmas time and don't like that someone's getting onto their turf even though the reason that he's doing it are are also bad <laughs> but it is yeah. but it's quite funny and they chase him around and he fights them he, he smashes them in the face with things um it almost feels like a scene out of jingle all the way yeah um, and that was very very good <laughs> but then the rest of those kind of scenes feel very wrong in this kind of setup was jingle all the way 1996 yeah, so blimey was, i thought it was no, later no, than so that. that was the 90s um so this is Jingle All the Elf. Elf <laughs> yeah, all the way. all the way. <laughs> um, Put that Salvation Army Santa bucket down. Um, so yeah, so it, um, it it it's it's a weird mix. And then the, apart from that, the middling elements of this movie that vaguely work are those sentimental ones. Um, but they're not that great. But then the real nadir of this, the real terrible bits of this movie are the um other cynical sort of not it's not like a bro comedy 
but it does no. feel closer to something like dodgeball i suppose yeah if if we're going to look at vince vaughn's vincent vaughn's back catalogue yes, yeah. then yeah that's a, that, that i think is a fair comparison but that is more of a kind of slapstick joke film yeah. isn't it and, and and so it is this weird mix where it's like nothing really works and it's these two kinds of films that have been pushed together um and it's just yeah it's it's a weird one isn't it and i think this comes from the writing so this is written by dan fogelman who we've talked about before and on the podcast are you aware of his work in general um yes so dan fogelman we've done some of his stuff before haven't we you say that but i don't think we have Have because i'm looking through have we did we do crazy stupid love I think we haven't Have done we that. Have we not done Crazy Stupid and He Life. wrote that. Yeah. But um, I've talked a lot about the show This Is Us, yes. which is a show that me and my wife watched. Um, we watched all of and we loved it. And I think it really lost its way towards the end. But at that point, the characters were so good and so fleshed out that like you really, really cared. And he also created, wrote and executive produced the um, show Pitch, which is honestly one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And I think I talked about this at the time. Is it a baseball? Um, it's a, it's a baseball one. It's a drama about the first woman in MLB, and it's so well done. And it, it yeah, it's brilliantly executed. It gets it nails all the baseball stuff, but also provides an amazing character story. And it it, it only got the one series, and it, it kind of I wouldn't say it flopped. I think it had kind of a niche audience, but it it didn't have the impact I felt that it should have had. And that is that is just an amazing series. So I think he's a really really good writer. But he also wrote Cars, so, you know. <laughs> I remember liking Crazy Stupid Love when I watched it many moons ago. Yeah, I, I we think We should so. talk about that. We need to get around to that. Done it. Um, but he also did, so he did Cars. He also wrote Tangled, which is a very good film. Yeah. So, Hang on, did, did you just say a Disney film is yeah, very I like good? Tangled. Tangled's good. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I, I know, like that's a, a meme, isn't it? Of the, them pointing all the swords at the guy from Tangled saying, what opinion will get you in this position? <laughs> yes. That's like you <laughs> saying that you like a Disney I film. I like quite a lot of Disney films. I don't like Frozen 2, which we talked about previously. That's a boring, com- convoluted nonsense film. But Tangled is great. <laughs> Frozen's great. Princess and the Frog, we should talk about at some point. That's, That's a good, a great one. film, Princess and the Frog. We great should do another Disney well. month at some point, and we should pinpoint the ones we we like a lot and talk about them. We should. Well, did I tell you we're we're going to Disneyland Paris next summer? Oh, very so nice. We should. Um, very nice. We should do it around then. I think it's we're going the last week of July or first week of August. Like, yeah, we could do it then. Excellent. Excellent. Dis Dis August. <laughs> Does you lie? That makes that so. Does not make any sense. We'll come up with something. Yeah. Um, and then this this movie yeah. was directed by David Dobkin, um, who we have talked about before because he directed the Eurovision Song Contest movie. Ah, that that was a surprisingly good film, wasn't it? Which was great. I really enjoyed that. Um, and that, that was had, a ridiculous film, yeah, w- with a lot of silliness, but that actually really, I think, captured the spirit of Eurovision and had, I think, one of Dan Stevens's best performances. I and there's Dan a lot of good Stevens ones to choose that. from. Really love, yeah. Him. Um, but apart from that, he also he's done lots of like music videos and TV and things like that. Um, but he has Wedding Crashes. That's yes. another Vince Vaughn one that we have. So he's about. done some Vince Vaughnies. <laughs> that sounds like an award, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> He's won so many Vaughnies. <laughs> um and The Change Up, which is a, one of those like body swap movies. Yeah. Um with Jason Bateman in, um, which I've not seen but looks awful. Um It looks horrendous. But yeah, so he's got this really weird mix of stuff in his C V as well. But like the Fire Saga movie, the Eurovision movie is great. Um and this thinking about that this almost has a kind of similar thing where it's got that slapstick mixed with something with a lot of heart yeah but this he has feels... also directed a lot of maroon 5 videos and is directing <laughs> an upcoming maroon 5 documentary so you so know. we'll hold that against him um, yeah <laughs> but 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 whilst but fred claus almost feels like what would work tonally with the eurovision movie you know 13 years later Whereas this feels incredibly disjointed in its approach. 
Yes, and you, you get the feeling that his his direction is more towards the slapstick comedy side, yeah. whereas yeah. Dan Fogelman's writing is much more towards the emotional character study side of things. And it feels to me like Dan Fogelman was finding his feet with this film, right? Yeah. At this point, yeah. he's written Shit Happens, don't know what that is, um, and he's written Cars, and then he's gone straight gone from Cars to Fred Claus. So, you know, that's quite a leap. Yes, yeah, that is a little bit of a leap. Um, and yeah, so it does feel quite disjointed. Um, the plot is silly and not very good. Um, you know, you think about, there's all sorts of fish out of water Christmas movies. The Santa Claus, for instance, is another one that kind of has a similar sort of, I'm a normal human, but now I've been thrown into the world of Christmas. Oh, crikey, what hijinks will ensue. Um, and yeah this is another Which, you know we've seen in so many christmas films yeah haven't we? yeah and so it doesn't necessarily do anything particularly um special around the sort of setup of the elves in the north pole or anything like that um you know you compare this to elf for instance or um, a nightmare before christmas has those scenes at the north pole as well um it's a very similar kind of thing to that um yeah. it's also got some weird sort of it feels almost like the rubbish um charlie and the chocolate factory movie in terms of the yeah. way that it's set up sometimes there are posters um, for the new wonka all over london every time i come to the office <laughs> timothy chalamet's creepy face is looking at me from one of them and i think he's a great actor but i don't know something about this film just has a very very creepy tone it looks rubbish i'm sorry <laughs> it really does it looks awful um i'm not interested in it whatsoever um come get me for june 2 yeah that's we'll we'll wait for you. That's what I'm excited for in terms of Timothy Chalamet. What else is we'll he erase got? everything between the Cannibal one that we watched and June. Everything in between is just it didn't happen. Because yeah, that Cannibal movie is very good. That's fantastic. Um, what else has he got coming up, our boy Tim? He's in a lot of stuff. To be fair, he's I think he's quite prolific. He's I think one of the interesting things. Oh, he's playing Bob Dylan. In a movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I think he's got the right look for that. A complete unknown. A young Bob Dylan shakes up the folk music scene when he plugs in his electric guitar. Oh, so it's when he goes electric. Okay. That's that's a very weird, specific time. <laughs> There's going to be 50 minutes of him getting booed. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that sort of Bob Dylan-y look, doesn't he? Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's that's good casting. It is good casting. But at the same time, I am getting a bit is a bit too much Timothy Chalamet oversaturation, I think, right now. He could do with yeah. having a little bit of a break and then coming back and doing something, um, something really horrible and nasty and mean, <laughs> like a horror movie, like a proper yeah. horror movie, not like Bones and All, which obviously is brilliant, but that's far more of a sort of almost like a sort of finding oneself road trip movie than a horror movie, even though it's about cannibal people. Um, yeah yeah come back come back and do like a really nasty scary horror film that's what i'd like him to do and do something completely left field um because i feel like wonka is just a bit too obvious i'd like him to do some yeah. interesting stuff yeah i mean I, I maybe would watch wonka if it was on tv and i was half asleep you know it's, it's that <laughs> category of film isn't it I'm, I'm vaguely interested to see what they do with it but it, we didn't need that did we it's it's just weird because it's like the guy the guy who's directed it is the guy who did the Paddington movies, which are good. Okay, um, Padding, yeah, those are great. And you you just think, oh well, okay. It's just, did we really need a prequel to, about Willy Wonka's discovery and building of his chocolate factory? No, what we really needed was the backstory of Paul Giamatti as Santa. Because <laughs> actually, talking about good points, I like Paul Giamatti as Santa oh, he's, Claus. He's brilliant. I this film as well really also good. has a really good cast who are totally oh, yes. wasted on all of yeah. its stupid jokes. Yeah, just just I'll just quickly go through the, the cast of this. Um, you've got Vince Vaughn, obviously, um, who for once is not the worst human being in a movie, because Kevin no. Spacey's also in this film. I know. Um, <laughs> I didn't know, even know he was no, in it. Until no, I didn't know. I was, when oh, he turned up, I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Kevin Spacey, who is obviously a bad man, but <laughs> I have to say in this film, is doing his best impression of David Cross in the first Chipmunks film. <laughs> 
Uh, the thing is, right, that actually Kevin Spacey has filled this archetype a few times. He is very, um, obviously he's an evil human being, but he's very good at playing these incredibly over-the-top evil characters in like children's comedies or, or like screwball yeah. comedies um another great example is the horrible bosses movies which i don't know if have we talked no, about i've never i've never seen any of those they're quite good fun actually they good take cast. that strangers on a train sort of dynamic thing isn't charlie day in, yeah in charlie day's in yeah them. um yeah they're they're fun silly movies and he's very good at doing that sort of um that over-the-top villain role um um but yeah so so he's he's good in this um on top of that though you've got rachel weiss you've got paul giamatti you've got elizabeth banks rachel weiss let's just rewind doing her best impression of hero finds tiffin i have to say (laughs) (laughs) even though she's actually british she's putting on this weird like the sort of is it posh is it cockney london london accent which is really odd yeah, it's a weird tweak to what she normally sounds like as as herself, isn't it? And you yeah. just kind of think, did they tell her to do that? Did they say, no, your normal voice isn't good enough, we need to make it more Cockney? Yeah, and like she's capable of putting on an American accent as well, so like, why did they do that? She's, um, and it's like, I'm sorry, no one British is working as a like a traffic warden in Chicago. That doesn't happen. Would you even be able to do that in terms of getting... Um, yeah, like a visa or getting, whatever. Getting maybe in visa. 2007 you would, but today... Or maybe <laughs> she's not half happen. American and she's got dual yeah, nationality yeah. and she's therefore now working as a traffic warden in Chicago. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, Where's she was totally wasted in this. in Fred Claus? <laughs> That's what I yeah. want to know. Well, wasn't that what Wonder Vision was about? That big famous <laughs> show? Exactly right. Um, but yeah, you've also got Elizabeth Banks. You've got John Michael Higgins. Shout out to John Michael Higgins. Oh, he's great. Um, he's very fun in this. Um, we've got Miranda Richardson. You've got Kathy Bates. You've got Ludacris. You've got Trevor Peacock. Trevor Peacock, Jim from The Vicar of Dibley, who also is <laughs> yes. the narrator of the film. Did yes. you notice? Know yeah. And it's, yeah. So you've got this amazing cast and you're just like, well... Why? So that lent it a bit of the, the his narration, which always seemed to come in at the worst possible time, lent it like a bit of really sort of weird festive charm that was totally wasted on this on this film and just sort of butted up against the sort of silly jokes. It's like the next scene, it's going to be Vince Vaughn and his brother having a snowball fight and kicking each other. It's like, <laughs> and what's very odd is that it's a very inconsistent um, narration as well. Yeah. It's just sort of randomly here and there. And you're just sort of like, why why did they add it if they weren't going to add it consistently throughout the movie? Like from a sort of pacing and perspective, it's very strange when that comes in. Um, can I say something controversial? You always do. <laughs> Might get cancelled for this. I quite like Vince Vaughn as an actor in things. An outrage! How dare you? I don't. I don't hate him. I know lots of people. No, he's he's perfectly fine. I know lots of people do hate him because he is right wing. He is a Republican. He does like his guns. Um, yeah, but I think he's an he. I think he's good as an actor. I like him when he is in movies that that fit to his skill sets. Mm. Um, and when you look back at what he's been in over the years, that does work. Um, you know he's done some he's done some good things here and there um obviously he's done a lot of those comedy movies like like old school and dodgeball and things like that but, swingers but on top of that like apparently i've not watched it but apparently his performance in that um remake that they did of psycho for no reason <laughs> apparently his performance isn't that bad i've not watched it because why the hell would i watch a remake of Psycho that's basically a shot-for-shot remake. Yeah. Um, I'd rather watch Wonka than that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But, you know, he's also been in The Cell, that that Jennifer Lopez weird artistic sort of horror movie. Um, I'd like him to do more weird things like that. And he was in one of the series of True Detective, wasn't he? Oh, yeah? Um, I never saw that. Which I watched... I don't know why I didn't finish it, but the first series of True Detective was amazing, but I never got round to finishing it. I think other things came up, and I keep meaning to go back and watch it. Um, but like each series is different, isn't it? There's a different sort of setup and a different mystery. Um, 
and yeah, it's, he does interesting things here and there. There's, there's that movie from a couple of years ago called Brawl in Cell Block 99, just like a um, a prison drama. Um, and apparently that is amazing. And he like really drives that film. He's got skill. Right. It doesn't show in Fred Claus. <laughs> I think it's fair to <laughs> fair to say. Um, but yeah, he's been in he's been in some some interesting stuff over the years and i actually i don't hate fred i don't no i do hate fred claus um i don't hate vince vaughn as an actor i think he's better than people say he is definitely i think he's he, people probably only know him for the comedies most of which are sort of not that great aren't they or passable you know none of none of his comedy films necessarily really stand out but as you say there's a lot of interesting stuff hidden behind those yeah i think the only comedy movie of his which i really like is dodgeball because it is just incredibly stupid and fun and it yeah it, it bring there's something really nostalgic about dodgeball in the same way as um anchorman where yeah. a lot of those comedies around that time were very crude and mean and brought, same year same year wow um a, a lot of those movies were quite mean or they used quite sort of um, nasty humor but those yeah. two had this slapstick absurdist element to it that actually shied away from a lot of those kind of things um it's the same with will ferrell isn't it yeah like, like yeah. my wife will not even entertain the notion of a will ferrell film because she thinks that that's all that he is well, she doesn't realize that he and again can that's the sh- that's a, bite a whole onion <laughs> Because we do have such incredible movies as um, as Holmes and Watson, <laughs> but but that, that's that's the that's the thing. Will Ferrell actually does have some really good movies under his belt, like Everything Must Go, like um, Strange Strange Fiction. Fiction. Yeah, he's done great things. Um, it's not all the Ballad of Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think that one's all right too. I I quite you know I, I i like the ballad of ricky bobby as well we're a will we're a will ferrell stan podcast here yeah i will um, always be a will ferrell apologist and there was spirited from last year that was fun spirited was great i've been listening to the songs um that was that was a, a perfectly cromulent uh i liked it more than you did i thought yeah. it was fantastic i i liked it but i didn't love it whereas it you, ticked all of my boxes whereas you really 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 did enjoy it yeah I'm going to have to watch it again on my own because my wife hated it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, Fred Claus, I think, doesn't doesn't get the best out of anybody involved in it. No. You know, you've got talented writers, you've got talented directors, you've got talented cast, and all of them, it, it's, it's far less than the sum of its parts. It, it's far less than the sum of its parts and somehow is still almost two hours long oh god it is when i saw how long this movie was when i pressed play i, was, I just thought jesus christ why is this movie that long yeah. um did you did you like um the weird subplot about fred claus and his little orphan friend the yeah the tearjerker orphan plot that didn't really go anywhere yeah, yeah loved it great added loads to this this film you'd have thought that they would adopt him yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. But then I guess there would be then that weird thing about Fred Claus is sort of immortal and sort of not aging. Yeah, and they did nothing with that. They didn't explore that as well. There's so much fertile ground in this. This could be like a whole massive TV series. And maybe like that is what Dan Fogelman actually wanted to do. Because if you look at something like This Is Us, it has all of those elements and they're explored at great length in a way that's really effective. And like, again, you could make one probably good film about him and the him and the orphan and him eventually adopting him or whatever. And that could be actually have a lot of emotional resonance. But yeah, it just stuffs this film. It overstuffs it like a, like a Christmas turkey, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, mm. There, there is an issue there, isn't there, with all of these different strands that don't really go anywhere. Um, but yeah, I would really like it if they'd explored some of that issue of him being sort of immortal. Because does that mean that his his girlfriend, Wanda, will age and die like Aragorn and Arwen? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Or when they get married or when they become life partners, does that then mean that she also becomes immortal? Because it seems as though Santa Claus's wife is immortal. Um, yeah, I, I got that impression. And Santa Claus's parents as well. They were granted immortality because he was a good boy when he was little. Like, yeah. Is, it, yeah. So maybe but, like it's to the <laughs> family. So if you marry into the family, I think you get immortality. 
And he's not even used that to, to try and get her to marry him. Yeah. So fair play to him. Yeah. It's very I mean, but then again, of course it would be a it would be a curse, wouldn't it? Yeah. And again, to. that's a whole other film to explore, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much in this and also nothing in it at all. And in fact that could be a really good sort of romantic movie plot idea. And maybe someone's done it already and we've not heard about it, but an immortal being falling in love with and and like there's there's been those movies about people falling in love with angels and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and demigods and yeah. what have you. But yeah, having a sort of I'm immortal for some reason, but what does that mean for my relationships with other people? That's something that could be explored fully in quite an interesting way. We watched a really weird Christmas film recently um, that was kind of like that. Um, I think it was on Netflix. I can't remember what it was called, but it had Chad Michael Murray in it and it was new. And he was like an angel come down to help this woman in a sort of Christmas Carol way. And then they end up falling in love. But then it's, yeah, it was seriously weird. And and yeah, yeah, I, maybe we should talk about that film because it was so odd. I can't remember what it was called. And his performance was really bizarre. But it, that was kind of along those lines. And it was like, oh, you can't fall in love with a mortal. You're an angel. <laughs> and I, yeah. And isn't there a, there's a um, Nicolas Cage movie that's the same kind of idea, isn't there? Of course there is. Um, Nicolas Cage. Ghost Rider. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Is it literally called City of Angels or something like that? The that Nicolas sounds familiar. I haven't seen it for sure. Um, yeah, I've not, I've not watched it either. I've I watched Renfield. It. Either, that reminds me. Oh yeah! Oh, no, it's showing me a trailer for a Nicolas Cage film. No, I'm trying to go onto his Wikipedia page, <laughs> which didn't Renfield didn't go down as well as people thought it might, did it? No, from the trailer, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, but apparently it's it's not so great. Maybe um, one for next Halloween. Look, yeah. it's Nicolas Cage's Dracula. Like, how bad could it be? <laughs> apparently, no, quite bad. Okay. Yeah, it's it's called literally City of Angels. An angel on earth, a doctor unable to believe, a patient with a secret, a love story made in heaven. With Meg Ryan. Because of course it's Meg Ryan as well. Um, directed by the guy who directed a series of unfortunate events and Casper. That's oh. a movie we should talk about at some point. The Casper movie. Casper from... the Friendly Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed those films when I was a kid. Yeah, with um, Eric Idle. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they were. Uh, that was a that was a fun film. I seem to remember. It's probably awful now, but <laughs> as a kid, yeah. I seem to enjoy it. Probably um, doesn't hold up well. Although some of the ones from that era are sort of timeless, aren't they? Like, do you ever think about the film Mouse Hunt? No, <laughs> <laughs> I did not like it as a. Oh, I used to I didn't adore like it that as a film. kid, so I never. I wasn't that interested. It's funny because it does have Nathan Lane in it, who I really like. And yeah. who, as I've grown up, I, I appreciate more and more in things. Um, but yeah, it irritated me when I was a kid. I, th I think we should watch that because I feel like that's a film that's going to hold up really well. And I don't really know why. <laughs> you know what's great about it? It's directed by Gore Verbinski. Pirates Is of the Caribbean Man also <laughs> did, also did uh, Mouse Hunt. I did not know that. Um, and in fact, one of the movies that we should watch next year for Halloween is A Cure for Wellness, which is the last movie that he's directed, I think. Oh, right, um, yes. Which is a really strange film featuring our best skinny boy, um, Dane DeHaan. Timothy Oh, okay. No, yeah. our, our other skinny boy. <laughs> our, our Valyrian skinny boy. <laughs> the skinny boy of the Thousand Planets. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we should we should talk about that at some point. It's a very odd film. It is really long as well, just to warn you. But it's very very strange. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really like Nathan Lane, so maybe we should revisit it and um, and maybe I'll maybe I'll enjoy it more as an adult. But as a kid, it really irritated me. It really got <laughs> that's on my so nerves. weird. That's like a kid's film. Yeah, but when I was a kid, those <laughs> those movies that were really aimed at kids sometimes really got on my nerves. Um, I think you, the the answer to this is that you only like mice if they're in like a fantasy setting because we talked about Redwall a lot on the last episode. And Fifeful we? as well. I'm a big fan of Fifeful. Really oh, an those. American Tale! What a film! And Fifeful goes west. Don't forget the one where yeah. he becomes a, a a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But but yeah, it's it, yeah. I don't know why, but sometimes those kind of films 
like Baby's Day Out, for instance, is a movie that I don't know if you've ever. You I don't that. think I've ever seen that. You know, that that's got that's more of a Dunstan checks in vibe. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, those kind of things. I think it's the the slapstick movies aimed at children really irritated me when I was younger. But that's why I think I, I really appreciated Mouse Hunt because I, it was doing all of that without talking down to me. Okay. Is my memory of it. Okay. I thought it was actually quite clever. Um, Baby's Day Out, of course. Wasn't that the last movie that John Hughes wrote? I believe so, yes. Um, we should definitely talk about Baby's Day Out <laughs> at some point. We could do uh, movies that irritated Rob when he was a precocious little dickhead. <laughs> Mum. <laughs> and pick out those kind of films. Um, but yeah, it's it's a... I've forgotten how we got on to talking about this. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's 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 a weird movie, Fred Claus. It's not very funny. It does these weird sort of nods to more sort of teen humour from the era, but within the framework of more of a family film. And a lot of Vince Vaughn's Vince Vaughn's character has a lot of dry dialogue, which is obviously what Vince Vaughn's very good at. Yeah, and they wrote that around it, but it doesn't work well in this kind of movie. That's the thing, and I feel like it's a good performance from him. Yeah, weirdly, yeah. I feel like he really suits this role and this character, and it's totally wasted on this film. Wasted on, yeah, wasted on this project entirely. Yeah, um, and that's that's sort of the problem. Um, but yeah, it's just mm, not worth it. Not worth a watch. Right. There's a pissing scene that's kind of directly ripped off from Elf, where he's got to pee in a tiny elf urinal. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> um, there's and, a scene where he teaches the elf how to dance. And there's the flying the reindeers scene, which is ob- obligatory in these kind of movies, where, oh my god, I can't control the reindeer. Oh, we're nearly going to crash. Um, yeah. There's a lot of formulaic elements from other christmas movies which i think they could have avoided you know what it does have is a rare instance of your favorite christmas song being used in a film yeah it does use my favorite christmas song i thought of you when that <laughs> came on. i love that song so much it's a tune it's it is the best christmas song i'm sorry it's one of the few christmas songs that you'd want to listen to outside of outside of christmas time because it's i used to not like it but you talked me around to it as you'll recall it's true it's true you persuaded me of its brilliance (laughs) we're talking about uh what's it called the waitresses yeah that's the name of the band christmas rapping that's the one there's an awful cover of it by the spice girls isn't there is there jesus yeah that's no good i uh, that boggles the mind (laughs) do you want to talk about bill clinton's brother Oh yeah, Bill Clinton's actual brother is in this movie. What's he called? Playing Bob? himself. Bob Clinton? Bob, Bob Clinton? Bob Clinton. <laughs> yeah, no, I think his name is... Oh no, Roger Clinton Jr. Roger, sorry. Roger Clinton, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's a very, very odd scene. There are a lot of odd scenes in this film. But there's one where they go to like a siblings anger management thing. Um, and like fam- some famous siblings are there. So Frank Stallone, who's Sylvester Stallone's brother, and the other Baldwin is, are there. And yeah, for Stephen some reason, Baldwin. Bill Clinton's brother is there. And he literally stands up and talks about how he's Bill Clinton's brother. And you're like, what What the hell is this? <laughs> this is so weird. You know Stephen Baldwin, right? Yeah. You in know, he does like Christian skating DVDs. Does he? Amazing. Yeah. Inexplicably is in The Usual Suspects, that all. That will- a movie yes. that many people see is one of the greatest movies of all time. That's right. Um, inexplicably is in that, but apart from that, is in things like Biodome and the Flintstones in Viva, Ro- <laughs> Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> yeah, no, it says here on, on his Wikipedia page, in 2004, he directed Live In It, a Christian-themed skateboarding DVD. I really want to get this. Oh, I bet it's great. Yeah, I bet it's awesome. Okay, let me get... I, I want to see this. Live In It. It doesn't even have an apostrophe after the end. Yeah, and he's Justin Bieber's father-in-law. Really? Yeah. Wow. Justin imagine, Bieber's imagine married to his daughter. Christmas dinner. <laughs> well, I don't have to because he was in Fred Claus. 
um but then yeah you've also got frank stallone um who also has a has a career of acting yeah um it's funny because the the baldwins all sort of were in stuff at the same time but was frank stallone successful because of sylvester stallone i don't know you do find a lot of the time that like very famous actors you go on their wikipedia page and they have a sibling you've never heard of who's also an actor like and you, you um, wonder about it don't like you? the hemsworths um you've got the lesser hemsworth yeah and the, the upper hemsworth but then there's <laughs> the, also aren't there three hemsworths there's the third hemsworth the old who i think is the oldest of the three um who a lot of people didn't know but turned up in westworld and was very good all right um i can't remember what his name is um bob hemsworth luke hemsworth all right luke yeah. hemsworth is the is the third hemsworth um, Stallone also played himself in a recurring role on the short-lived sitcom Movie Stars alongside fellow celebrity siblings Don Swayze and Joey Travolta. This is getting into a real like yeah, actor sibling <laughs> like whole universe, isn't it? Oh, Joey Travolta. I did not know about I did Joey not Travolta. Know about... <laughs> I did know. Did you say it was Don Swayze? Don Swayze, yeah. I, yeah. I know Don Swayze. I did not. Um, but I did not know about the other Travolta. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's great. Wow. Because Don Swayze turned up in something I was watching the other day. Not the other oh, yeah. day, but like earlier this year. What was it that he turned up in? I was like, oh, look, it's 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 the other Swayze. It was something. He's got a very long CV. I'm yeah, he's right he's now. been in a, he's been in a lot of stuff. Oh, I think it was Sons of Anarchy. I think he turned up in oh, an episode right. of Sons of Anarchy, which we've been watching at the moment. Um, Sons of Anarchy is a, it's basically a soap opera for toxically masculine guys. By the way, I love it. Right, um, it's very very silly. Um, and re- the plot is getting steadily convoluted. I'm there's this amazing bit where they go to ireland they go to northern ireland um and it's just it's like an american who read about northern ireland once when they were 10 years old then writing a scene there apart from it goes on for like five episodes it's just incredible um and of course it's all to do with the ira of course it is Um, yeah yeah he also couldn't be about anything else he also turns up in it's always sunny in philadelphia don swayze oh yeah um yeah so he's been, been in some bits and bobs been in some bits and bobs as old donald <laughs> which i assume is what it's short for um anyway fred claus anything else you want to say about fred claus um let's see what else did i put it's got a um the whole thing with kevin spacey's character is he's evil because he asked santa for a superman cape and he never got it and then santa gives him the superman cape and i'm like is this before or after he played lex luther and it actually came after but it's very close so i don't think it's intentional but it's a weird little bit of synergy there, isn't it? Yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's that's funny, isn't it? That's the reason that he um that that's the reason that that he became evil and anti uh, anti Christmas was was being put yeah. on the naughty list. But the whole um kind of the setup of that pastiche of corporate consultants is very very good. And again, that could be a whole pastiche film in and of itself, couldn't it? It could of kind of yeah. corporate corporates trying to take over Christmas. I like the idea of that. Yeah, it feels like when we talked about um, I've forgotten the name of it already. Spirited. Yeah. Spirited yeah, yeah. That does that, that in a very and, fun and, way and does it in a fun way. And that, in a way that links you, to Charles Dickens as well, so and, obviously it's great. Yeah, and that's what you could do with that kind of idea, and that did it very successfully, whereas, of course, this doesn't do it quite as successfully, but it is a good idea. There are these little ideas in here that could have been good, but it just never lands it properly. That's that's exactly it. It's a bunch of ideas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It feels like they took all the ideas from the writer's room and just kind of strung them together into a vague plot and that's really weirdly paced it's like he's saved christmas and made up with his brother and somehow there's still half an hour left and you're like what is going on with this film yeah yeah it's 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 all over the place really all over the place um so yeah maybe don't watch uh this don't waste the thing is it's like homer simpson said about eggnog in the simpsons you only get 30 sweet noggy days then the government takes it away again (laughs) Don't don't use up your um your mandated Christmas film viewing time on this film. 
don't yes. waste your time. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Um. So yeah, anything else to add, or shall we? Shall we? Uh, rank it. Yeah, let, let's rank it. Um. So how many? How many Santa Clauses beat you up in a toy shop? <laughs> um. Let's see. I'm gonna say seven of a possible twenty. I reckon I could take them. Yeah. Same here. I think seven's about fair. Um, yeah, seven is fair, I think. Yeah. One of them was ludicrous. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, what have we got next, then? Um, well, let's see. We've been talking about some Christmas films, haven't we? There's there's a new one on Netflix or Amazon Prime that we wanted to watch, which I can't remember. We should do at least one new one, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. Um, we have um, the one with Heather Graham. I think it was that one. Yeah, is that best Christmas ever? Is that now yeah. out? Is that available? Best dot Christmas dot ever exclamation mark with like, Heather Graham um, and Brandy Portugal dot the man. That's the one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's that one. But I also wanted to ask you, if have you ever seen Santa Claus the movie? When I was a kid, that vaguely sounds familiar. Did you hate it when you were a kid, like Mouse Pro- Hunt? Did you, probably. This is or maybe rubbish. I just found it boring. It, it, is, it has left no mark on me whatsoever. It's a, it's a weird one. Well, I, I think we should watch that because there, there's also like a weird sort of corporate attempt to take over Christmas in that film, isn't there? Um I and genuinely also, remember nothing about that film apart from that I think I'd watched it as a kid. Also, um, my wife loves it and has a lot of nostalgia for it because she watched it when she was a kid and I dared to say that it might not be good the other day and I got an absolute earful. <laughs> so I think we need to talk about it so that I can kind of exercise that demon. Okay, do so, you want to watch Santa Claus the movie next or do you want to watch best.christmas.ever next? Uh, I, don't, I don't mind. Which one would you prefer? Do we do new, do we do old, or do we save the new... Um, Let, let's do the oldie first let's do Santa Claus the movie yeah alright I think that's actually a good follow on from Fred Claus as well as it's a, it's kind of a, a telling a retelling of the Santa Claus story as well in its own way sure yeah yeah no let's do it very good and then are we going to do shall we do the Zemeckis Christmas Carol I've kind of I've, now that I've had time to mentally prepare for the idea I think I might want to watch it but. <laughs> sure shall we the horrifying Robert Zemeckis Christmas Carol movie. Yeah. Let's let's pencil that in. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. We can do those. Have we got four Christmas movies this year? Is that what I think that's four for? then. Oh, because we're going to do four Christmases as well. Oh, yeah. now that's too many. Yeah. yeah, let's let's do these. We can leave four Christmases for next year if we don't have if we have too few weeks before Christmas. Yeah. We don't we probably don't need to do two Vince Vaughn films, do we? <laughs> like, yeah, if there was multiple Vince Vaughn movies and we could do a whole month of Christmas with Vince Vaughn, that would be another matter. But since we can't, we'll leave we'll leave it to a very special time next year instead. Yeah. All right, fab. We'll talk about Santa Claus the movie. Very good. Well, um, you can find us on Twitter at Big Boys Don't Pod. You can email us Boys Don't Cry Podcast at gmail dot com. Ho ho ho! And jingle bells. And we'll be back next week to talk about. Santa Claus the movie. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye.